Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, today we are finally reviewing Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Genesis. Not to be confused with Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Master System or Game Gear. Starting with the development history, this game was developed by Yuji Naka, who left the original team in Japan and moved to California, where he started working with what is now known as Team Sonic to develop this game. Uh, it would come out just a couple months after the 8-bit Sonic 2, and one year prior to Sonic CD and Sonic Chaos. As far as which version of the game to get, the game has been released. Uh, of course, you can get the original Genesis game if you want. It'd be a little hard to track it down, but it's possible. It's been released in multiple collections, including the Sonic Mega Collection on various systems. It was also made available on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. More recently, it has been released on... It was also released on PC. And it is also available now on Steam. You can also play it on the Flashback Sega Genesis, which there is a home console and a portable version of. There's also, what I'm playing it on is the Sega Genesis Classic, as released by Sega themselves, which is an excellent version. Frame rate's very good. Controls are super responsive. There's also the Taxman Remake, which was made for mobile. The original mobile version, of course, works very well. It does have the game in widescreen, it also has a save feature, and you can unlock Knuckles in it normally. The mobile version might be the one for you, but I would advise caution looking at the home ports of the mobile version, because many of them have been done very badly. I had this... I had the mobile version ported to the PlayStation 3. The input delay was significant, and it did not have the widescreen. You could stretch it to widescreen if you wanted, but it was stretched. Not the natural widescreen you get on the mobile version. Starting with the presentation, the story is more or less the same. The evil Dr. Ivo Robotnik is once again capturing innocent animals and trapping them in his own badniks to do his bidding. He has also developed a space station called the Death Egg. This time it's up to Sonic and for the first time ever playable miles tails per hour, to stop Robotnik once and for all, or so you would hope. Graphically, things look a lot different than previous games did, especially the original Genesis game. Rather than having a pre-rendered character sprite with pseudo 3D effect, they went for a straight-up animated version. Looks very cartoonish. Uh, very bright colors as well in the game overall. All the enemies have new designs. All the bosses are brand new. They have excellent designs. The soundtrack is also top-notch. Uh, same producer. He does an excellent job throughout the series, and this game is no exception. On to the design. In general, the game plays the same. You can play as Sonic and Tails, just Sonic, or just Tails. You run as fast as you can to the right to make it to the end of a stage. Uh, the stages are separated into 11 stages, each with two zones, and you use the spin attack as your primary attack. You can jump into the spin attack or you can roll into it as you're running. You can also do the super spin dash, which is a combination of the super peel out and the spin dash that were being developed for Sonic CD. Both Sonic and Tails have the same abilities. Tails cannot fly. Uh, this ability is... <coughs> Tails cannot fly. This ability is only used as a mechanic to help him keep up with Sonic. But he does have a nice running animation where he's using his tail to propel him forward very fast. The number of levels include the Emerald Hill Zone, which is the Green Hill Zone after the emeralds are used to transform it, the Chemical Plant Zone, the Aquatic Ruin Zone, which is your Underwater Zone, Casino Night Zone, which is your Pinball Zone, Hilltop Zone, the Mystic Cave Zone, Oil Ocean, Metropolis, which is the only level with three zones, the Sky Chase Zone, which leads to the Wing Fortress Zone, which leads to the Death Egg Zone. So, 11 in all. There are the same old power-ups as well, the Super Ring, uh, Extra Life, Super Sneakers, and Invincibility, as well as the Shield, which has a new graphic, but is the same old shield. Grants you an extra hit. The special stages can be accessed from signposts, which are still used as checkpoints, although there aren't as many as I'd like there to be. You have to have 50 or more rings when you reach a signpost, which gives you more chances than the original game. But the special stages themselves have gotten a lot worse, in my personal opinion. 
It's this weird 3D game where you have to avoid spikes and collect all the rings within a time limit. You have to complete these stages to unlock the now seven Chaos Emeralds. Once you get all seven, you can unlock Super Sonic, who, when Sonic collects 50 rings and you jump, you will transform into. Sonic changes appearance, he turns gold, flashes. He's basically got the invincibility and power sneaker upgrades automatically. And he has a new running animation, which is basically him flying, which looks really cool. However, he is extremely difficult to control. He jumps a lot higher and moves a lot faster, so he can cover a lot of gaps that normal Sonic can't. But this also means that you might wind up overshooting and killing yourself, which happened to me quite frequently. Once again, Sonic and Tails only get so many lives and so many continues. When you run out of continues, it's game over, and you have to start over. Now, many ports of this game do offer save state features, or of course the mobile version, which has its own game save. There's also the original version has a level select code, which you can use to pick up where you left off if you choose. You can use it to practice more difficult zones so that in the future you can play through them without running out of continues. There's also a code to give you all seven Chaos Emeralds, so fuck those special stages. It does get you the good ending as well. The bosses are all interesting, they're all very different, and they require different mechanics to defeat. The final bosses are the most challenging, of course, of the bunch, but for different reasons. The Death Egg Zone has two bosses in it. Uh, Robotic Sonic, once again making an appearance for the third time. This one is considered by fans to be Silver Sonic Mark II, but you can call him Metal Sonic Mark III or whatever you want. It's the third Robot Sonic. This Metal Sonic cannot be damaged except for the front of his head. He is otherwise invincible, and quite difficult. After him you have to fight the giant Death Egg Robo as it's called, which is a giant Eggman robot piloted by Eggman. Uh, this robot is again only vulnerable at the top, which you can only reach after he jumps, so it's a very specific condition that you have the trigger. These fights are very difficult primarily because you have no rings in the Death Egg Zone, so one hit and you die, which is really cheap, honestly. The level select code of course can take you back but if you want to do it, again, if you collected all the Chaos Emeralds, they're gone. So you either have to collect them again, or if you're like me, you say fuck it and use the code. Once you get their patterns down, they're not bad. But until then, they're really cheap. Of course, this is in comparison as well to the eight big games, the first two, which never gave you any rings for any boss fights. So it's not as hard as those, but it's up there. As far as its replayability goes, playing as Tails is the same as playing as Sonic. There's no difference here. So, aside from doing it for the aesthetics, there isn't a whole lot of point. It is a fun game in general. The Sonic community overrates this game, I think, personally. It's not a bad game, but I don't think it's the pinnacle of the franchise. I also don't think it's nearly as hard as a lot of newcomers seem to think. Platformer fans in particular have a harder challenge with the newer Sonic games like Sonic 2 and 3 uh, as opposed to Sonic 1 and Sonic CD and that's because one of the things I've been noticing as I reviewed these games is the newer games or as I call them the Silver Age Sonics which was Sonic Chaos, Sonic 2, 3, Triple Trouble they tended to have much easier level design and the in-game level designs for Sonic 2 generally enhance the speed more there's a bit of a track that you're supposed to run on Platforming fans, they like to jump off the track and look for secrets. This will usually get them killed, or they'll just find nothing. Whereas, people who are just casually playing will probably just run through the rails, get to the next area. And there's even a few parts where you will actually lose control of Sonic as he spins through a tube or through a teleporter or something. Uh, this happens within a frequency. So, the game definitely feels more casual, combined with the more cartoonish art style and the general easiness of just kind of riding the tracks through the stages. Uh, personally, I didn't have Sonic the Hedgehog 2 as a kid. I would rent it a lot, or I would play it at my uncle's house. Eventually, my uncle gave it to me, along with his system. So I did get to play it. When I finally did get to play it on my own, I noticed that I actually sailed through it pretty easily, especially after completing the 8-bit titles later on. While Sonic 2 is challenging, especially towards the end, as well as for the Metropolis Zone, 
I don't consider it one of the hardest Sonics, not nearly. I pretty much breezed through it, and I actually died more on subsequent playthroughs because I used the cheat code to get Super Sonic, and I would overshoot things. Whereas when I play without, I pretty much just coast through the game. So I don't think it's as hard as people make it out to be. You'll, you'll need a little practice, but it's not that bad, especially compared again to older games. But Metropolis Zone is very cheap. Enemies are just going to be dropped in front of you in places where you can't possibly avoid. There's a lot of precise platforming required. There's going to be a lot of cheap deaths in Metropolis. But the cinematic nature of the Sky Chase Zone, as well as the Airship Zone, pretty much make up for how bad the uh, Metropolis. Pretty much makes up for how bad Metropolis Zone was. And that wraps up our Sonic 2 review. I hope you guys enjoyed this and found it informative. Next time we'll be taking a look at Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. Till then, I'll see you guys around. Take it easy.